Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at customizing our GIMP photo editor. So I currently have GIMP 2.10.22 installed on my computer, as you can see here. And this is what it kind of looks like, more or less, by default out of the box. Now if I were to go over here to the GIMP website, and this is on their release announcement for this new version, you can see some different screenshots on this page. And you'll notice that it's arranged a little bit differently than I have here. So the tools are in a very slim manner on the left-hand side here. And then we have multiple panels here that are stacked on top of each other. So we have some panels at the top. And then we have a second round of panels under here. So I want to rearrange some of the defaults that I have for my GIMP to look a little more like this. And then add some different features to make it a little bit more what I'm used to. So if I come back over to GIMP, you know, the first thing I'll notice here is that we have these icons. So these icons for me are a little hard to distinguish. They're all using the same color. And I actually really like the color icons that pop a little bit so you can see the differences between them. So you can customize these a little bit out of the box by going to edit and preferences. And then in the interface, you can actually change the icon theme. So you could just change this to use color icons, click that. But these look a little bit old school to me, so I want to make sure that we're using something that looks a little modern, but is still differentiated between the different colors. So there's an icon pack over here that we actually created at Janku, so we call it Flatty Cakes, and you can see the general look of the icons here. They're all really flat-based design, and we could actually come and we could download that so we could use it in our GIMP. So you see here the installation instructions are going to Edit, Preferences, Folders, Icon Themes. So we're almost there right now, so we're in the Edit Preferences, and if you come down here to the bottom, there's this folder section. I can expand it by clicking that. And then scroll down here to the icon themes at the bottom. And you'll see that we have a local folder here. Now, when I tested this earlier, for some reason, this is not working in this default location here, this top one. So putting the icons in this folder didn't actually seem to apply it. So I was able to actually get the option to show up here. So if I were to come to icon theme, you can see it there, but switching to this doesn't actually work, as you notice. So let's keep the icon theme for color for now. Let's go back to this icon theme folder and let's open up a new folder over here with this new icon theme here. And you'll see all the other icon themes that we have in here. And then let's just go back to the repository for Flatty Cakes. We'll go to the code option here and we'll download the zip here by clicking this. And we'll just save that. And then we can just come over here to our downloads. So let's open up a new window, go to our downloads and we'll see the zip file that we just downloaded. Let's just extract that. So right click and we'll say extract here. That'll open up this folder. And then inside that folder is the actual icon theme that we want. So this is the Flatty Cakes icon theme. Let's grab this subfolder and let's just drag it over to this location here. Now you see that it won't actually let you drop it in here. That's because this is a protected folder on the computer. So we actually have to have elevated permissions to do that. The easiest thing to do here is actually to just go into your terminal, expand this, and then let's first go into our downloads folder. And we can list the files here. Let's go into the Flatty Cakes master and list the files in there. So you can see that we have this Flatty Cakes icon theme here. And we want to move that over to this location here, the user share icon. So user share GIMP 2.0 icons. So let's come over here and let's do a sudo mv for move the Flatty Cakes icon theme to user share GIMP 2.0 icons. And let's do that. And we have to put the password for our computer in here. Okay, so now that's moved over and you can actually see it over here now in this folder. And if we were to come back to GIMP, we could actually go and we could close this down and we'll just come here and we'll close out of GIMP we'll restart it. And now you can see that this is working. So we had it previously selected. So if we went up to our preferences and we look into our icon theme, you'll notice that we're on the Flatty Cakes icon theme now and it's working. So we're getting all those icons coming through here. Another thing about these icons is they're actually all grouped together. So if you want to see all the icons in a certain grouping, you have to right click on them and then you can see the different options within those groupings. So you can check that out for a couple of these options. Now, we really want it to just work on hover. So one of the easiest ways to do that is actually just to move this section into a really narrow column on the left-hand side. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab these options here and I'm going to just close out a lot of these. So I'm gonna close this first tab here. I'm gonna close this second tab and I'm gonna close the third tab. 
And then I'm gonna grab these tool options. These are really helpful. And I'm gonna just move these temporarily over here under these paths. Now I'm gonna grab this section on the left-hand side and you can rearrange how wide it is. If you just bring it all the way down to the most narrow, so it's appearing all in one line here, as you hover over these, they automatically show the grouping information. So you can come through and you can just see this information. You don't have to right click or anything to expand these. It just happens automatically. I find that really handy and it really improves my workflow and speeds up my design process. Now, another thing is a lot of this information, things like these different brushes, they're helpful at times, but I don't need them all the time. For instance, if I'm looking at my tool option below here, if I were to actually come here and click on the paintbrush, I can see brush options just by clicking on this. So I don't really need these dialogues open all the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out of these as well. I'm gonna close this tab. I'm gonna close the patterns tab, the fonts tab as well, and the document history I don't need either. So once I close those, this will all jump up to the top. So this takes up the full right hand side. And then what I really wanna have open on the top here is I want my layers, cause I use that pretty often, and I want my paths. I don't need other dialogues here. So I'm gonna close this tab and then, although I have layers and paths, I don't want tools options hidden behind here because I always wanna be able to see what my tools are doing. So what I wanna do is I wanna stack this tool below the layer in the path. So I'm gonna grab this option and if you pull it off, you can undock the dialog, you can see it like that. In order to move this all the way to the bottom and make it take up half space, you grab this tab here, bring it all the way down to the bottom where it highlights blue and you let go there and then it'll take up half the space here. Now you'll be able to see your layers and your paths while seeing your tool options. So every time you click on a different tool, the tool options actually change as you see over in the bottom right hand side. And this is a much cleaner workspace for at least me when I'm trying to get my ideas out there. I wanna have a lot of space for my working canvas. And I also just wanna be able to see all the important information that's available to me at a very high level. Now, if I want additional information, I could always come and I could open up new tabs. So I could come to my windows and I could go to dockable dialogues and then I could open up, say, my brushes dialog again. So this is what we had closed out previously. Now, again, I don't wanna see that all the time, but I could always get to it if I ever needed to. Hopefully this helps you understand how to set up GIMP in the way that works best for you. Maybe you like how I set it up here, but maybe you want a few things differently. Now you at least have the tools to go through and change where the dialogs appear, change icons and things like that. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up just so YouTube knows to share with other folks and subscribe to our channel for more content like this in the future. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.